Hello friends, this is Nazmican. Today in this video I will try to cover some of the key moments in the games of Strong Event European Chess Club Cup 2015. The tournament finished recently and there were many beautiful games played, but I tried to choose the games according to my taste, which I found instructive. The Siberian team won the Strong Event this year, thanks to the Vladimir Kramnik's strong performance, who managed to beat players like Ivanchuk, Topalov, Swidler and Epomniachi. Okay, let's move on. I will just pick the games randomly and begin with the critical positions. I will not go too deep into um, the positions, so you can stop your video at any moment in order to try it yourself. Okay, in the first game, uh, Adams against Li Chao. In this position, um, White is a pawn up and he has to figure out a plan in order to uh, win this position. There are opposite colored bishops in this position. And it seems that it's hard to activate the white king in this very moment because um, d3 pawn is hanging and white pawns need protection because they are all separated and they are weak. In this position, Adams found a very nice tactical idea to convert his advantage into win, which is a very strong move, rook g6. White's idea is to play f6, f7 with tactical uh, means. Black cannot stop this idea, so he played the move king c7. And after playing f6, White's idea uh, revealed after rook takes e6, he has the move f7, threatening the rook and f f8 queen. So if he takes, takes, then bishop d6 can not help Black for him. After um, the move g7, white wins. So rook d8 was played, but white's idea um, is achieved after f7. He placed his pawn on very strong f7 square. And now it's time for white to activate his king, uh, possibly to d5 or even further. Black played the move rook f8, king c3. White begins his idea of centralizing the king and Black played the move king d6, king c4, and white needs to prepare this move um, king d5 by means of bishop d5, discover check, and also he's threatening the c5 pawn, so bishop e3 is forced, but after bishop d5, king d7, because uh, king e7 is not possible because of this um, tactical trick, so king d7 was played, and after bishop c6, White can play his king to d5 after placing the bishop on e8 square. King e7, bishop e8, and now the game is over here. Black played the move bishop d4, and white doesn't take on e6 because it's not necessary. King d5, stronger continuation. Now there arises a situation where black king is certainly in danger. Bishop f2, rook e6. King d8 and after king c6, it seems that bishop d7 idea is too strong to meet. And after bishop d4, bishop d7, Li Chao resigned in this position because there is no moves to meet this move, rook e8. Okay, let's move on to the next game quickly, which is Dimitri Andrekin and um, Johansson game. In this position, uh, you can still try to stop your video and um, try to figure out the moves played in the game. Of course white is a very nice attacking position, but uh, for the moment the black queen uh, protects his king very nicely, so white has to find some active moves in order to increase the pressure. According to computer, there is a very strong move, rook f6, um, which is not played in the game, but it illustrates some um, attacking points after g takes f6, g takes f6, white is threatening to play rook g3, and queen f5, rook g3, king f8, queen h6. It seems that the computer gives um, such lines which cannot uh, be calculated so easily. It has ideas of attacking this way and playing um, in this direction with his rook. But in the game, Andrei can play the um, human solution 
which is bishop d1. He wants to simply remove the black defender on g6 by playing bishop h5 and he's trying to attack on f7. So bishop c8 trying to protect and attack the rook on h3, bishop h5, queen d6. And now you can also stop your video here and try to figure out the continuation. Dmitry Andrykin, of course, doesn't uh, um, retreat his rook to any place like g3. He finished the game off with the move bishop takes f7. Black is forced to capture, and after rook, queen takes h7, king f8, rook takes. And now white's idea revealed after the move rook h6. He's attacking the rook, uh, queen, and also trying to play rook f6, bishop e6, rook f6. King e8 and queen takes g7. It seems that black cannot move his pieces because bishop is pinned. Queen is forced to um, protect the square f8 because rook f8 is in the air. But in the game he played the move b4 and allowed the tactical finish with the move d5 here. And white regains his piece with interest. And black resigned here. The point is that bishop cannot take due to the pin here. And if queen takes, there is a mate on f8. But he could play the move um, instead of b4. He could play queen e7. But this time, according to computer, it's very easy win after um, the move queen g6 and bishop f7, trying to protect this guy. Bishop f7 and queen h6. It seems that white can collect the pawns on the queen side and try to advance more with his g pawn. Let's say if a5, then there's also rook a6 threatening to play this. And with this very passive pieces and exposed queen, black has no defense against white's threats. And next game is um, played between Caruana and Gennady Fish. In this position, queen placed very far away from the black king, and white forces are pretty active, especially on the e-file. And now white should have a finishing touch here. Um, you can stop your video in order to figure it out yourself. Fabiana Corona made a nice move here, um, which exploits um, the weakness uh, around the black king. This is bishop e7. The idea is that by attacking this um, f6 bishop, white will penetrate to the 7th rank with his rook. Takes, 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 takes. And now uh, black is threatening to mate in 1. White has some back rank issues. So for this reason, Karana made another attacking move with the move h4. He wants to advance h5 and also creating a loft for his king rook f8 attacking the queen and queen g4 this queen has uh, many purposes on this square not only um, supports the idea of h5 it can go e6 d7 or c8 in many lines and queen d5 only logical looking move centralizing the queen and trying to um, help black's defense but this time with active pieces um, white gains material after rook takes b7. Now he can exchange um, all the pieces now. Queen e5. And now queen e4. Caruana uh, made a transition to the rook end game, which is perfectly winning for him after d takes e4. Rook e8, f3. Now with this rook very strong on the seventh rank. It's clear that white will have great advantage. Rook e5 trying to counterattack. b4, a5, rook b6, and after a takes b4, rook takes c6. It's clear that um, both pawns on b4 and d4 are weak, and after rook b5, white will gain the d4 pawn, and in this position, black resigned. And let's go to the next game. This next game was played between Grishchuk and Yevgeny Nayar. 
in this position Nayar played a very nice move um, but let's check what happens after the normal continuations like knight takes b2 white can take on g6 and take on b2 and after the exchanges takes 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 probably this position is still um, maybe winning for black but it's complicated for this reason um, instead of going for knight takes b2 line Nair makes a very instructive move in this position um, he hits two birds with one stone with the move e4 trying to get rid of this um, doubled pawns on the e file and also uh, by forcing white to take on e4 he wants to get his knight to very nice blockading square on e5 and rook takes e4 is impossible because of knight e1 stuff here uh, forking the king and the bishop so Grishchuk played the move f takes e4 and knight takes b2 it's clear that e4 pawn blocking the bishop's diagonal and making it hard for um, white to sacrifice his piece on g6 Grishchuk played um, Rook d2, knight d7, bishop b1, rook takes c3, and after some adventures, as I said, um, he went on to use this e5 square um, for his pieces and gets to his opponent's king, and in this position, agrees to resign. Very instructive um, idea for Nayar in this position. Okay, let's move on to the next game. And this position was um, reached between two players, Hare Krishna and Arnaudov. You can stop your video in order to figure out how to finish the black off here. And Hare Krishna played the move knight f6 in this position. Of course, bishop takes f6, is losing the pawn after queen takes, attacking h6, which cannot be protected um, any move in, except queen f8, then he can take on e5. So in this position after knight f6, king played the move h, h8 because uh, king f8 can be punished by knight d7. After King h8, it's also possible to play um, knight d7 attacking the queen, which is which doesn't have so many squares because uh, f7 pawn is also threatened. So after queen e7, white played the move knight d6, attacking f7 and c8. White wins at least an exchange in this position. Of course, rook takes can be met by knight c8, and queen takes also can be met by knight takes f7, winning the queen. So in this position, up to knight d6, black resigned here. Okay, let's move on. And this is an interesting position from the game David Howell against Dierma. Um, in this position, black has some uh, um, threats to meet here. White is threatening to play knight d6. And in some lines, he is looking at the b pawn also. But black has a chance to organize some counterplay against um, white threats in this position. And you can stop your video in order to find how to continue for black in this position. And black found the strong move, knight takes e4. A very nice idea to open up the e file in order to use this pin. And queen f3 was played. Of course, the point is that bishop takes e4 can be met by knight f6 and although the b6 is hanging there is also a threat to um, h3 pawn so black has a great advantage in this position and after knight takes e4 um, after 80 moves uh, white lost the game against his lower rated opponent probably because of this tactical trick black um, had the advantage 
and later won the game. Okay, let's move on to the next game. This is the position from Vasily Ivanchuk against Jon Ludwig Hammer. In this position, White is simply winning, but after Rook e7, Ivanchuk played the strongest continuation here. Uh, you can stop your video in order to find how to um, play the strongest continuation for White. Of course, there are many moves winning here, but Vasily Ivanchuk simply played the knight g4. Double attack, and black has no ways to avoid the disaster. He played the move bishop takes g4, and after rook takes e7, not only white is um, ahead in material, he also has active position and ideas of mating the black king. And after rook takes f1, bishop takes f1, knight f5. Ivanchuk played the move queen f4, attacking the g4 bishop and pinning this um, knight for not to take um, on e7, but hammer take on e7 and he gets made after queen f7 and queen h7. Nice victory, easy one for Ivanchuk. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Um, this interesting game was played between Dmitry Yakovenko against Andrew Ledga. And in this position, as you see, white has a strong pawn center and black has um, somewhat uncoordinated forces on the queen side, especially this a5 bishop is standing worse uh, on this location on a5. And immediately Yakovenko seizes the chance to make uh, use of this a5 bishop. You can also stop your video here and in order to find how to continue for white. Yakovenko played the move knight e2, immediately trying to make use of this um, bishop on a5, threatening to play uh, rook c5. Black played bishop f7, he's trying to create a counter threat by playing e5 against the uh, white queen in this position. Rook c5 was played, attacking e5, securing this queen and the knight with the bishop. Queen c2 simply continues uh, the attack with the move queen c2. Bishop takes, rook takes, white is threatening to play b3. And also he is threatening to take on a7, so he has no moves uh, but to prevent this idea of playing b3. He played the move queen b4, attacking here and creating ideas of playing bishop b3. But I think uh, this was all calculated from the beginning by Yakovenko. He played the calm move, rook takes a7, and after bishop b3, simple answer, queen b2, trying to exchange queens and um, make a transition to a one end game, queen e7. Black avoids exchange and trying to make use of this pin on the deep file by attacking also d1 rook. Rook c1 was played. And black played the move e takes d4. I also tried to analyze uh, what if black captures on a4 with the knight. If he takes, then white can simply play the move bishop d1. And now this knight looks pretty um, bad on a4 because after bishop takes d1. Queen takes d1. It has nowhere to go. It should be protected somehow by black. Let's say knight c5. Trying to make use of this pin. White can simply take and play the move queen b3. Um, winning the queen in this position. So after rook c1, black played the move e takes d4. And a5. Attacking the knight. And also creating the ideas of playing bishop c4 in order to um, make use of this pawn on d4. White will try to get d4 pawn. Knight a4 was played. And after check, takes, takes. Again, black's knight is in danger. And after knight c5, only move. There's no other move here. Knight c5. White can win a material 
by tactical means again. Also, you can stop your video here in order to find how to continue. But the command go boldly goes for the queen b4 move, allowing black to advance with with his d pawn because there is no way to help this knight on c5, which is pinned on this diagonal. d3 was played, rook takes c5, and it seems that black is getting um, make use of this d2 passed pawn, but after queen b3 check, king h8, quite simply blockades it on d1, and he will soon capture the pawn by playing probably rook c2 and bishop e3 and in this position black resigned here a very nice game and I don't want to lose time and going for the next game here and the last game for this video is the game played between Vladimir Kramp and Jan Nepomniachtchi and this is a brilliant example of positional play in this position why it is better he has the d-file and slightly more active pieces b7 bishop is locked for black and white can simply improve by playing with rook d2 protecting b2 and preparing rook fd1 but in this position Kramnik employs a typical idea for this kind of structures and he plays the move c5 here he wants to play against the bad bishop on b7 and he managed to do so, and throughout the game, Nepomniachtchi couldn't place his bishop on a better square. c5, sacrificing temporarily on b2. Bishop takes b2. Of course, other moves are possible, like b5, but this time, um, white can switch to queen c2, protecting you, preparing b3, and also queen e4, trying to keep this bishop on b7. Uh, but after c5, Nepomniachtchi took on b2, queen b3. This is the idea um, for Kramnik. He's double attacking uh, on b6 and b2. Bishop f6, c takes, a takes, bishop takes b6, queen c8. Now, as you see, both sides uh, have their weaknesses, and um, black will try to play the move bishop a6 and maybe bishop b5 in the future in order to place his bishop onto a better square but for this reason Kramnik plays a very nice move rook c1 preventing the idea of black playing bishop a6 and creating the ideas of um, attack attacking the c6 uh, pawn queen g4 trying to activate his queen and attacking e2 of course White shouldn't, shouldn't take on c2 and allow the exchange operation on c6 and e2 because then black will probably be equal at that position. So rook c2 was played, protecting here and maybe trying to play rook c1 in the future. Rook a6. Black is also, um, has ideas of attacking the weak pawn on a2 bishop f3 trying to get rid of this active queen on g4 and queen of four a queen a4 of course um white can exchange the queens because it will it will be um easily recognized that if white can exchange all the pieces except this bishop then he will get a better um, bishop against bad bishop on b7 so all exchanges are welcome takes takes rook d1 um, he's ready to activate his rook on d7 bishop a8 was played bishop c5 white is also trying to place the pawn on a3 in order to make use of his rook which for the moment is protecting um, to the uh, a2 pawn rook b8 a3 e5 black is trying to e4 uh, move and 
and get some space in the center. E3. Kramnik wants to deploy his bishop onto a better square like c4. e4, bishop e2, bishop b7, queen b7, uh, rook b7. As I said, every exchange um, makes it easier for white to attack black's weaknesses because there's a bad bishop on a8. For this reason, rook c4 was played, attacking both on uh, a4 and e4. So it takes c4 and bishop takes c4 is forced. King g7 and now black's passed pawn on c6 uh, is blocked by white forces and he is ready to make use of his passed pawn a4 bishop e7 and black is also trying to break the blockade on c5 but as i said every exchange uh, make it easier for black for white to um, attack on the black because there is a bad bishop on a8, a5, f5. As you see, even if a c5 uh, is played, this bishop cannot go anywhere because it's pretty passive due to his pawn structure in the center. Rook d8 activating and also creating attacking ideas. Rook a7, counter attack on a5, a6 is forced. King f6 and black will try to activate his queen mainly with the move. King e7, rook e8, a very strong move. Sorry, rook e8, a very strong move, trying to disturb this idea. And c5. Now, as you see, um, even after pushing this pawn to c5, black bishop is not alive because. Bishop c6 cannot be played due to rook e6, and for this reason, white's idea should be centralization of his king. King f1, king g7, king e2. White will slowly pre prepare the invasion of his king. Bishop c6, rook c8. And also, the, there are no, uh, not too many ideas for black because, as you see, after bishop c6, rook c8, it's also possible to see that bishop is not still going anywhere because central pawn's formation doesn't allow um, him to make active moves. Bishop d7, and in this position, position Kramnik didn't take on c5 because this pawn isn't going anywhere, so it can be taken with the king in the future. So rook g8 was played. And king h6. While um, white is making use of his king, black king is out of the play. Rook b8 was played. White is threatening simply rook b7. So bishop c6 is forced. Rook b6. And only move. Bishop a8 trying to prevent bishop b7. And bishop b5. As you see, Kramnik simply preparing the idea of King d2, king c3, king c4, and also preventing rook d7, the activation of black rook. Rook c7, king d2, it's also um, easy to see that this pawn is going nowhere, so rook c8, Nepomniach simply waiting, king c3, king g5. Black is trying to attack uh, on the king side with this king, but this should be prevented, h3. Prophylactic move, h5, and king c4, further activating his king, h4, and after rook e6, white is to, uh, creating the idea of playing um, rook e8, an exchange of rooks. This will end the game because then white will have, after h takes, f, f takes g3, White will have a great time winning this position after rook e8. In this position, Nepomniachtchi resigned. Uh, he, he cannot move um, his pieces on, onto better squares. A very nice uh, positional victory by Vladimir Kramnik. This shows um, a typical example of playing against bad 
bonus piece. Okay, this is it for now. I will continue making um, videos on European Chess Club Cup, which was very exciting to watch, and I will cover more games soon. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next videos.